So, um, so let's go and talk about the uh, the uh, current like academic hypothesis for these Carolina bays again, because I I do think you know that they are they have a cosmic origin. Like I think that yeah. there was an event. Looking at the evidence, um, and and what's interesting is you know you've got these two guys, you've got Michael Davius and Tim Harris, and you've got Antonio Zamora. Um, and they're just, they're two completely different hypotheses. And, uh, Michael Davius thinks that it wasn't chunks of ice, but that it was like a cavitated ejecta regolith blanket or something where, a who? Uh, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so, so a, an asteroid hit the ice sheet and, and just a blanket of, of sand and water and, 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 and ice just kind of washed over and away from the impact site. And then mm-hmm. it was, and it was more like, um, like. You know, like uh, paint bubbles, like when you're painting and it pops and you end up with a, like an elliptical shape. Yeah. Uh, he thinks that that's what formed the Carolina Bays. I, I, to me, I don't think you would get like that, um, that precise with the ellip- you know, the elliptical shape of them, uh, if that were the case. So I think it's a combination of two of those. I think that it's, you know, Antonio Zamora is more on board, or I'm more on board with his hypothesis of of the actual ice chunks crashing down yeah uh, at least at least the outer edge I, uh, obviously i think the uh, middle part of where this would have happened completely vaporized but it would have been the edges that came f- you know coming out it came crashing away and then came came down onto the ground that, that formed that but what again i think there's a lot of evidence that suggests that the time frame has to be a lot older uh and and um tim harrison and um and michael davis have a, a pretty good idea mm-hmm. of, of that mid pleistocene because something big happened during that time uh, and it hasn't been it hasn't been solved, and, and right. so we have two mysteries now. Because keep you know, there's no make 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 no mistake about it. You know, the Carolina Bays are a mystery. Like they, we really don't know. Even even the academic scientists will tell you, you know, well, we're really not sure. This is our best hy- hypothesis, right? Uh, and so when you start looking at all of the different hypotheses, you know, you got to start you know pulling and taking what you can from those to kind of get a better picture. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, they think that the uh, Carolina Bays were formed. Um, <clears throat> by wind and water. I mean, basically, it's, it's an Aeolian lacustrian hypothesis, uh, and and sometimes they add other things too, like a like a solution, a dissolved uh, solution underneath there, and water tables that rise and fall and things yeah. like that. But yeah. but really, you know, right now the the dominant academic hypothesis, pretty much, uh, you know, being used by guys like uh, Christopher Moore, mm-hmm. uh, Doctor Moore, is um, is that it was wind and water that the glaciers themselves were just blowing air off the glacier across the the northern uh north american coastal plain yeah and all of the carolina bays would have been ponds and and it would have been swirling these ponds into these perfect ellipses and then they just stopped Mm. um that's that's what they think and and it actually all goes back to a guy um named ray kalzaworski um he was a geology um phd candidate uh somewhere in in the carolinas and um Actually, probably says it right there. Uh, no, it doesn't say it. Anyways, uh, he um, in 1977 he put together a, a, a PhD dissertation mm-hmm. uh, where he got a sand table, uh, kind of like what we what we have right here, but it would be full of sand. He made a bowl shaped depression in the middle of it, filled that bowl shaped depression with water, and then took a fan and blew it across the water in one direction for. 15 minutes, Mm -hmm. went to the other side of the table and blew it across the opposite direction for 15 minutes. He did that for four hours. Wow. Well, I mean, to be honest, I don't know why. Like, I don't know what he was trying to achieve because, you know, that's there. Wind doesn't work like that. (laughs) You know, well, the only reason I could think that he would like take the the sand and go back and forth like that is to show like seasonal variation of winds. Maybe. Maybe. I don't, I don't I really don't know. Still interesting. Well, it is interesting, but this is what he got. Like this image right here uh, is is what he got at the end of this experiment. Uh, and he made a really cool oriented lake. And I showed you images of oriented lakes earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and his what he was trying to do in his dissertation was to prove that the Carolina Bays were oriented lakes. And to prove it, he, he took this bowl shape of water and created this football shape. <clears throat> um, now, from the very beginning, I mean... He started with a bowl shape depression full of water. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's that's what a crater is. I mean, if you take a perfectly round bowl shape, I mean, you look at the moon; it's full of craters. Yeah. It's full of bowl shaped depressions. Then he filled it with water and then blew air across it back and forth. You know, for for four hours. And right. It's 
there's so many variables, like environmental variables, that are left out of this explanation uh, that it just it I, it baffles me that this is still like this right here is like the the go to for Carolina Bay hypotheses for mm-hmm. the academic hypothesis. Um, you know, 1977 dissertation that was never peer reviewed. It was never published anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, went into some guy's office. And uh, they gave him his PhD. He went on to become a uh, oil and gas uh, geologist. I think, oh, really? I, think in, I think in Texas. Never went back to Carolina Bay's. Never wrote another hmm. paper. That was it. And and this is what they used. In fact, Christopher Moore has a paper. Uh, it was actually a, a presentation that he put together for a, a conference titled "Kazaworski Was Right." And and he had this whole thing about you know how wind and water and things like that were. Where they call it catabatic winds, that the winds mm-hmm. were blowing off the glaciers. The, the, the air above a glacier is really cold and it's dense. And so it, it blows off the glacier in, in, in a direction away from the glacier. Uh, and he's saying it's those winds that went over those ponds to form those perfect ellipses. Right. Uh, and he's done a lot of work on, on a specific bay called Herndon Bay. Uh, and he went through and did a bunch of you know uh, OSL dating and things like that on Herndon Bay. Yeah, they actually think that Herndon Bay has migrated, um, that it actually started here and had migrated to this point right here. Uh, it's all it's all in that paper. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is again when you start looking at it. So here's Herndon Bay right here. This is using Google Earth. You can see I pinned Herndon Bay in the middle. This is the one that they did. They've done all those studies on, right? Okay. Uh, and again, Aeolian Lacustrian, that this had to have been a pond and had to have been a pond for so long that wind and water had blown it into a perfect ellipse. Uh, that, that would have had to take thousands of years. And then it stopped mm. and, and it was a perfect ellipse. But when you look at the LIDAR, if that's true, then it has to be true for all of them. It can't, you can't just pick one. You know? It has to be every single one of those would have had to have been lakes. Again, this is all farmland today. This is all yeah. high and dry. These are rivers. These are all rivers of the past. But when you click on the LIDAR, you see how many or how extensive these mm-hmm. Carolina Bays are. And, and they all have this. You, like I said, using that least squares method, we can go on and we can pick points all around this rim. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, mm-hmm. man? It's super It's super compelling, yeah. you know, especially, you know, I know you said you don't think it's from the Younger Dryas, mm-hmm. but um, it, it's interesting to me how... Um, you know, conventional science and, and academia has not sort of done more research into the Younger Dryas hypothesis and, yeah. and tried to either validate it or invalidate I, it. Yeah, I, that's, and that's the whole point. Like, just, that's the whole reason why I got into this. Yeah. <laughs> Back in 2015, I got, I got a master's degree in geoscience. Um, I started a, a, like, I wanted to, co- to teach a college level geology class. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, the timing was ironic because that's also the same time that, um, Randall Carlson first went on with like Joe Rogan mm. and uh, and and you know I was like hold on you know and he started talking about you know a lot of things that made a lot of sense about the Younger Dryas and I was like yeah so I started focusing on the, the and that's kind of why I went back to the Carolina Bays at that time and then you know here we are today talking about them um, but yeah I, I, I definitely think that this was a catastrophic event that these were all created at the same time um, and, uh, you know, now, like I said, I do have the credentials, you know, I have the background now I've, I've, t- I've taken <laughs> for some of these guys, I've have taken more college level geology classes than mm. any of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, I have, I have two minors from, from Valdosta state university. That's where I went to school. That's where I first saw that first grand Bay. Uh, and even then back then I asked them, I was like, well, how did, you know, how did it form this ellipse? Right. Cause, cause you really, when you first go to grand Bay, you go to the top of this tower, it's like a hundred foot t- high and you could just see the whole swamp all the way around you. It's really kind of neat. Right. And it looks like it's circular. And, and I remember asking the professor, I was like, you know, how did this form so, you know, such a neat circle? And he's like, well, it's actually an ellipse. And and uh, he told me all about the wind and the water hypothesis and mm-hmm. things like that. And I was like, really? And he said, but there is also this other hypothesis. This was back in the year. This was 2000. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. And, and uh, it's really interesting because I got interested in it. I went to the internet, which back then it wasn't Google. I can't remember what it was, but um, I Googled or I, or I typed in Carolina Bays and it actually brought up George Howard's website that he talked to you about on his mm, show. Yeah. And so I, I, read, I read his paper on, on uh, Carolina Bays. Uh, and then I kind of, like I said, I kind of didn't really think about it. I just always thought they were kind of neat. Mm-hmm. And then back in 2015, I got back into it hardcore. And, yeah. and it was because of papers like this 1977. I'm, I'm, I was born in 77. <laughs> so 47 years ago, that paper was written and that is the backbone. That is the bottom, bottom 
assumption on a whole stack of assumptions that's been built on top of it. Mm. And I think it's way incorrect. I think that there is, there's way too many environmental variables. Can you do a peer review on it? Uh, it was, it was never published. So oh. yeah, it wasn't a published paper, so you can't do a peer review on a Oh. published paper that's ever been published has, no, anyone, I mean, has, it, has anyone you were i mean george has published papers on this right uh yeah um i don't know about carolina base he's published oh, no. a lot of papers on on uh, the younger dryas oh, okay and then that's again to be quite honest like i said it's i was totally on board with these carolina bays being part of the younger dry story uh-huh. um I, I was on board with Zamora's ideas i was like man i think this is right i think this is what's happening um uh carlson was connecting the carolina bays to the younger dry that's what got him involved with it george was mm-hmm. uh, again i'm kind of i'm kind of the odd man out now you yeah. know because i'm like i don't think that they are guys you know and right. i'm showing you why right you know but i, I get a lot of pushback you know it would be lot. convenient if it was younger dryas right it'd be a lot more fun oh it, it, you're not even kidding man <laughs> like it felt like somebody punched me right in the stomach when i when i when i was showing michael davis that and i saw where they weren't like there were none of them below that that right, uh, right. that shoreline i was like oh 